This pump is garbage. Hey everyone, I'm Grant and welcome back to the channel. Now that I have my workbench organized, rest of the shop, not so much, but I wanna get back to actually working on stuff. So I wanna tear apart this MP231 that came with the AX15 that we got for Jacob's 1990 YJ Wrangler that we're also swapping in a Kubota V2403. So we're doing a diesel swap and an automatic to manual transmission swap. Now, when we picked this up, we were told that the chain had broken and I haven't opened it and it doesn't sound the best, but we were gonna try to diagnose it and fix it. I have a ton of MP231 parts lying around. So we're gonna see if we can fix what's in it. But the other thing I wanna do is install this SYE or slip yoke eliminator kit. Now, this came on another MP231 I had bought. I don't know what the brand is, but I kept all the parts. So we're gonna get rid of this, install that. So with that said, I'm gonna move the camera and we're gonna to get to work. Now, for those who are wondering, the tools that we're gonna be using are pretty simple. It's a 10 millimeter 12 point because you need it for that socket right there. And then we're also using a 15 millimeter as well. Now I'm gonna be using an electric impact just to make my life easier. Now I meant to say, there is a bolt and clip that you have to reuse here. And this holds in the speed sensor for the MP231. I'm doing this from memory, so I forgot about this. There is a snap ring here. So I have a set of snap ring pliers that I got from Harbor Freight. Not a sponsor, bought these myself. We are gonna be using these to remove that snap ring right there. And then this housing, which we've gotten loose, should come right off. I don't know if you can see this, but the chain is most definitely broken. Or, well, the chain's not co connected correctly. Can't say for sure yet if it's broken, but it doesn't look right. So what we're gonna work on now that we have gotten the housing off, and this is actually the pump that lubricates everything in the transfer case. We're now gonna focus on removing this back half, which is a bunch of these 15 millimeters and this one 12.10 millimeter on top. All right, so, the nice thing about MP231s is they actually have provisions to separate the case. Now, on this side, there's this section where you can stick in a screwdriver and just pry up like that. Now, the one thing you wanna make sure is that you have all the bolts removed. I rebuilt a transfer case once where I hadn't cleaned it like this one has been cleaned, and I was missing a bolt. So you need to be careful of that, and I believe there was that provision there. Yep, there's another spot right there as well to break the seal. I don't think the chain is broken. Oh, the chain is wore out. And actually this thing needs a deep cleaning as well. This, this might be the nastiest MP231 I've ever worked on. Now here, oh, and it is caked. And this magnet is designed to get any dirt and debris before the pump tries using it. Now, seeing how nasty this is, I'm a little bit hesitant to reuse that pump. So I'm gonna need to go through my box of parts see if we have another pump. I know I have another MP231 on my property, so we might just steal the pump out of there. But yeah, this thing's, uh, this thing's nasty. Now, one of the things I actually did forget to do was take off this front yoke. I'm pretty sure I do not have the correct metric socket for this. But this is a inch and an eighth, and it fits pretty well. So 
but we're gonna try it. That worked. These cases are absolutely disgusting and rain is supposed to be heading my way in the next very short while. So what I'm going to do real quick is not move the camera. I'm going to run outside, hook up my power washer and power wash the crap out of these before it starts pouring down rain on me. So I will report back in a while. Hey everyone, it's the next day. I spent a lot of time cleaning out the inside of this last night with the power washer. And it did start raining on me, which delayed a lot of things, but these cases cleaned up way better than I was expecting. What I am going to do now is spend a little more time just cleaning up the outside of the case. And I want to clean up this housing. This is for the SYE kit. But once I get that, that done, we'll go about reassembling everything. All right, everyone, this is a bit of a change of pace. I've spent all day today trying to get this transfer case together with the Y chain kit, and it just doesn't work. I quickly put it together with the standard chain, works perfectly. So I'm gonna go step-by-step step on how to reassemble this with a standard chain with this aftermarket SYE kit. And again, I don't know who makes it. So first we are gonna grab the range fork and the range Mm, sprocket. I'm going to be kind of making up names as I go. You want that to stay level as well. And when you install this, you want the range fork to go into this slot here. The next thing you want to do is get your selector fork. Now this determines two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, or neutral. Now there is a spring. You want to make sure the spring is on it. And you also have this coupler. This is actually what makes the transfer case go from two wheel drive, four wheel drive, or neutral. Now, there are two edges. You want this beveled edge to be facing down. So you put it in like that. Get it in here. Line it just like that. Next, we are actually gonna go to the back side of the case. You wanna go ahead and install the oil pump. You want to install it on the pump first, then slide it into place. Oh, that just hurt my soul. There we go. Now, you want to be careful not to let this drop on the floor because you can break the tabs. Ask me how I know. With that done, we now need to assemble the output shaft. Now, the output shaft has threads here and it's going to slide in like that but we have to put on the parts for this end, which it first starts with this, and you want this here, this is what your chain's gonna ride on, to be facing down. You just have to kind of align it like that, and then it'll slip right on. And then you have this range sprocket. Now, there's two sides. The one that has this lip faces down. Now, you know what, you have it right because it will not turn. Next thing we need to do is install C-clip to hold it in place. I barely have it on. Now you wanna make sure that clip is fully seated. Now notice this will not move, but this can spin freely. This transfer case is going to have some regular oil in it because it's going to be connected to a manual transmission that has gear oil in it. So what I'm going to do is put some STP on all the bearings. And that'll just guarantee on first startup that I'll be lubricated. Being careful to keep that attached. We're going to do it on these roller bearings as well. Actually, since this is still very easy to take out, do that as well. And that just ensures 
all these little bearings are well lubricated. There we go. Back to the chain. Now this is a bit of a balancing act. What you have to do is you need this to slide through this bearing here while at the same time getting this aligned up like that. And it was actually surprisingly easy. I'm gonna be using this ultra black oil resistant Permatex. The key here is you wanna use as little of this as possible because if you use too much, especially right here, this is where the oil pump is, it can actually suck up and clog up your oil pump. So you want just a very, very light coating of this. Another thing I like to do is kind of smear it. See, like the glob right there wanted to go in. Yeah, that was another high spot. And there we go. Next, we install this. Now, what we're gonna be doing, this section of the back half of the MP231 is what goes over here. The oil pump is gonna slide down onto this, these splines on the output shaft. And this spring and this rod is gonna be coming up through here. So you kinda of have to get everything aligned. So it can be a little bit tricky, just take your time. Ah! This is Grant from the future. Don't forget the magnet goes right there and it will go into place okay I rotated the output shaft and that actually aligned that yoke now we are going to quickly put in all of these bolts again now all these are 15 And you do have to put in one 10 millimeter that's 12 point. Next is the output housing. Now again, we want to put a very, very, very light coat of this Permatex on this. Okay, now looking at this, I missed that. This is where that rod is, and that's where oil comes. So I'm gonna clear out part of the path here so oil can flow freely. The other nice thing is this is gonna be sitting for quite a while. So even if I don't get this perfectly correct, by the time I add oil to this transfer case, this will dry and still work really well. Before we do that, I almost forgot. This is the gear that came on the output shaft. This is what gives you your speed to your speedometer. So we put that in there and we take another one of these C-clips. Again, I want to go ahead and give some lubrication to this bearing. some all-purpose grease and I like to coat this metal surface with it so it doesn't damage this seal. In an ideal world, I'd put a new seal on it. We're just going to reuse it and hope it doesn't leak. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put some Permatex on this end as well. Now, I do not know the metric size of this nut because I don't have the correct metric socket. However, I do know 
that an inch and an eighth fits on it just about perfectly. You want to give it a good couple of ugga duggas. I'm going to go grab a torque wrench. I've looked at a couple of different sites. All of these are pretty much just 25 foot pounds, so that is what I'm going to do. forgot we got to put on the other output yoke again same thing you want to take a little bit of grease coat that edge slide it on and again same thing with the nut just put a light coating of RTV on it just so it doesn't leak Now, what we should be able to do, and if I've done this right, we should be able to get into every single gear. That is neutral because it's not connected to the input for the MP231. So I can spin each input or output independently and nothing happens. And finally, that should be four low. So as I spin the input quickly, the output spins very slowly. The last thing we need to install and this is used, I doubt the gearing on this is correct. This is going to be what tells our speedometer how fast the Jeep is going. This can go one of four ways. And I have spaced it out because that's just the safest way to do it. And quite frankly, I can figure this out later. The transfer case has been fixed and rebuilt. Not necessarily the way I thought it was gonna be rebuilt. I really did think we were gonna be installing that wide chain kit, but we were able to install the SYE kit and everything appears to be working. Now I am leaving the two drain plugs out. That way I know there is absolutely no fluid in it. However, when Jacob comes tomorrow, we're gonna to be able to install this on his AX15 and install the AX15 on the Kubota and measure for drive shafts, which is really exciting. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye.